Hi. So the last video we looked at had to do with Snell's Law, which was the mathematical formula we can use to solve problems that involve refraction. Um, this video basically continues on to that. This video is going to look at problem, actual problem solving using Snell's Law. So the last video showed you the formula, but it show you how to solve any problems using that. So what we're going to look at here in this video is three problems ranging from, ranging from pretty easy up to pretty hard that involve the Snell's Law formula. Now, I'm going to run through this pretty quick. As you're watching it, if you want to be able to follow the steps in my working out, it's probably not a bad idea to pause it if there's anything that you're unsure about. Um, or just rewind and have another look if you can't follow it the first time. Okay, so without further ado, here are some problems involving Snell's Law. Okay, so here's our first example. Now, what we're trying to do here, so we're looking at a light ray that's passing from air into water, which has a refractive index of 1.33. And it hits that boundary between those two materials with an angle of incidence of 50 degrees. Now, given that, we're going to try and calculate the angle of refraction as that ray passes into the water. So our first step here, as with most physics problems, is to draw a simple sketch that shows what's happening in this problem and label your sketch with the relevant information we need to solve it. So the angles, the names of the two different media, and their respective refractive indices. Having done that, our next step, as with all physics problems, is to write down the information we know using the appropriate and correct symbols, and write down what we're trying to find, which in this case is the refractive index theta r. Having done that, I'm going to start off with Snell's law in its usual form, but then I'm going to rearrange that, this time to make sine of theta r the subject of my equation. The reason I want to do that is I'm working my way towards finding theta r. That will be my final answer, but before I can get to that, I need to know sine theta r itself. So I've rearranged my equation. I now plug in the numbers that I know, I work it out on the calculator, and having done that, I get a final answer for sine of theta r of 0.576. Now that's not my final answer, that's not the actual angle itself. To get the angle itself, I need to now do the inverse sine of that, if you remember your trigonometry from last year, and that will give me my angle. So I do inverse sine of 0.576, which gives me 35.2 degrees as my final answer. All right, now the next example is going to look at something a little bit different here. This time we're looking at a light ray passing from air into a transparent crystal of salt. Now this light ray hits the surface of the salt crystal at an angle of incidence of 30 degrees and passes through with an angle of refraction of 19.2 degrees. So given this information, we're asked to calculate the refractive index of salt. So we draw our diagram here. We label it with the various angles and the different refractive indices. Now in this case here, you see I've put down Ni equals 1 for air. It wasn't mentioned in the question, but one thing you should know at the end of this topic is that the refractive index of air or a vacuum is always equal to 1. So you, it was implicit in that question that Ni was equal to 1. So I label my diagram. Having done that, up the top here I write down what I know. Again, like the previous example, using the correct symbols. And I write down what I'm trying to find. So in this case here, I'm trying to find the refractive index of salt. And because that's what the light ray is passing into, I'm going to use a subscript R for refraction for that one. So I'm trying to find NR. So like before, I start by writing down the regular version of Snell's law. And then here, I'm going to rearrange it like I did before. But this time, I'm going to rearrange it to make NR the subject, because that's what I'm trying to find. And what we'll see here is that the calculations this time are a fair bit simpler. So there's no need to use things like inverse sine or anything like that. So rearranging the equation, I end up with that expression for nr. I then plug in my numbers into that. Now remember when you're doing this, make sure that your calculator is set to degrees and not to radians by mistake. The way you can tell that is if there's a little d up somewhere at the top of your calculator, you're in degrees. If there's a little r, you're in radians and then you're in trouble. Uh, having said that, most of the time it should be in degrees. So I put in the numbers, I do the calculations on my calculator, and I end up with a final answer of 1.52 for the refractive index. Now our final example is a pretty hard one. In this case here we have a bathroom mirror that's been made of a pane of glass with a refractive index of 1.33, and to the back of that pane of glass we've attached a reflective silver coloured material of some kind. So when light rays pass through the glass, they're refracted, they hit the reflective mirror that's attached to the back, 
they bounce off that, pass back through the glass and back into the air. So what we want to do here is determine the angle of refraction as that ray passes back into the air after leaving the mirror. So with a question like this, it's very important for you to be able to wrap your head around the question. And to do that, you really need to draw yourself a nice sketch showing what's going on because that will help your thinking greatly. So here I've got my sketch. I've got the mirror at the back that's reflective. I've got the layer of glass with its refractive index of 1.33. And above that, I have the air. And I'm going to just roughly draw what this ray is going to do as it comes in. So the ray is going to come in. It's going to hit that, be refracted inwards as it passes, hit the back of the mirror, reflect off that, and then be refracted back outwards again as it leaves the glass and goes back into the air. Now, because there's three different things going on here, I'm going to draw a normal line at each of those points. And around that, I'm going to label what I know already in terms of angles. Now, at the moment, the only thing I know for this question is that the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. Now, I forgot to put that in the actual question itself, and I can't be bothered doing it again. So just take it from me. The angle of incidence is 30 degrees for this question. And for my first part, I need to work out the angle of refraction as it passes from the air into the glass. So I write down what I know. And then I use Snell's law to find the angle of refraction. So this is a little bit like example one. I'm going to have to take Snell's law, rearrange it to make sine of theta r the subject, solve for sine of theta r, and then do inverse sine on that to get theta r by itself. So first step, rearrange that, that Snell's law equation. Then once I've done that, substitute in the numbers. Then once I've done that, is put them into a calculator and solve for the sine of theta r. So the sine of theta r is 0.376. Now I need to take that and do an inverse sine on that. So inverse sine of 0.376. And when I solve that, I get an angle of refraction of 22.1 degrees. So I've labeled that on the diagram there. Now you can also see there that using a bit of simple geometry, that 22.1 degrees will appear at several other points in that diagram as well, which I've indicated with those arrows. Now I basically, now I know that, I can work with the ray going back from the glass into the air. Now this time it's kind of the reverse. The 22.1 degrees will be my angle of incidence this time because it's going from the glass into the air and it's hitting that boundary as it leaves at 22.1 degrees. So now I need to take Snell's law again and this time I'm going to solve for the sine of theta r, but this sine of theta r will be the angle of refraction as the, like, the ray goes back into the air. So like before, start off with Snell's law, rearrange Snell's law to make sine of theta r the subject. Insert the numbers that you know, and then solve for sine of theta r. And then once I've done that, I'll be able to then take that and do an inverse sine operation on that. And that will give me my angle of refraction, which is the, my final answer. I want to find what's the angle of refraction as it passes back from the glass into the air again. So my sine of theta r was 0.5. So I can now solve for the sine of minus 1 of 0.5 and I get 30 degrees as my answer. Done.